In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Master Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. This is the seventh lecture in a series entitled The Sign in the Number 19. And it's entitled a Bridge Engineering from the Number 19. I will show in this presentation how Allah God Almighty teaches us the optimal design for bridges and load handling structures from pondering upon the last revelation to people of the Quran and the sign in the number 19. And just such that you can follow this presentation, I would like to remind you of the key points I mentioned in the previous lectures. Now, I said that Allah God Almighty in the Quran mentions the number 19 as a response to the accusation of people that they accused Prophet Muhammad that he wrote this book. So as a response to that, Allah says that he will place people that believe that the Quran is from men, from people, and not from Allah God Almighty, that he will place them into hellfire. And he gives many descriptions for hellfire. Among these descriptions, the one he gives in in the Quran, in chapter 74, verse 30, which reads, Over it are 19. So Allah is telling us here that the number of angels supervising the torment of people in hellfire is 19. Their number is 19. And Allah t tells us that the reason He chose 19 and not, for example, 18 or 20, or 20, that this number 19, there is a sign in this number, and that it will be a test for people that when they see this number 19, the sign in this number 19, will they accept this sign or will they reject it? And Allah says also about this sign in the number 19 in chapter 74, verse 35, verily, it is one of the greatest signs. So Allah is telling us that this sign in the number 19 is one of the greatest signs of Allah. It's a big sign. So, also I said that the way to uncover the sign of the number 19, it does not need um, university diplomas and PhDs and master's degree. It just needs you to have the book of Allah, the Quran, and just to ponder and think. Nothing more. It doesn't need school or university, you just need the Qur'an and, put, and to ponder upon, upon it. So, if we ponder upon the number 19, the simplest way to think about it is to think that the number 19 is composed of 19 units. It's 1 plus 1 plus 1 until you get to the summation of 19. And if we take this a step further and represent these 19 units with circles, we get 19 circuits representing 19 units of 19. And if we search for the optimal geometrical form to arrange them in, we find the one you see on the screen. That is the, this is the mathematical representation of the number 19, geometrical representation. And I said that the way to think about this geometrical shape as it's a code that Allah wants to teach us information from. So we need to decode this code. And the way to decode it is by pondering upon the verses of the Qur'an. And if we do that, we, some of the things we learn that Allah is telling us how He created the universe in this geometrical shape. How? By looking at it that is composed of three layers. The first layer, the one you see in the middle, is composed of a single circle. The second layer is the one in blue, it's composed of six circles, and the third layer is the one in orange, it's composed of 12 circles. So how does this, how uh, do these layers tell us the story of creation? So at the beginning of creation, there was Allah, the one and only, and that's coded for by the single circle in the middle. Then Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days, as he tells us in the Quran in chapter 11, verse 7, which reads, and he, it is who has created the heavens and the earth in six days. And these six days, they are coded for by the six circles in the second layer. Then Allah created you 
and you live a number of years in this universe and that's coded for by the 12 circles in the third layer representing the number of months in a year so we see that this one of the information we get from this geometrical shape of 19 is the story of creation and I also said if we do the following exercise and we locate the centers of the circles in the second layer as you can see on the screen shown on the right and we connect them with straight lines we get this hexagonal shape and since this second layer codes for the creation of the heavens and the earth so Allah is telling us here that he has created the, the whole universe everything you see and everything you don't see based on this hexagonal shape so everything in this universe will be its basic units will be assembled together based on the, on the hexagonal shape and I give a uh, numerous examples but one of them is the one you can see on the right here we have the hexagonal arrangement of a beehive a bee is a living system where Allah created it based on the hexagonal shape all of this I said in previous lectures now coming to bridge engineering how can we learn bridge engineering from the number 19 so if we do this following exercise as you can see on the screen we located the centers for, whole, for all the circles uh, uh, w for all the circles and then we connected them with straight lines but w the difference between the first example that we interconnected them so we connected all the points together and we get the shape you see on the right this shape is very, it's very simple to obtain just connect all the centers of circles and interconnect them so um, that's, that's the way to do this then we see this kind of let's say this structure or this frame the one shown on the left so if we ponder upon this we learn that Allah is teaching us the way to build frames so for, for example if you think at, of each line as a structural member for example a steel rod for example so the way to connect them together is to connect the steel rods such that each three rods they make a triangle which is equal in all sides so that is the way that Allah is teaching us to make frames if we have again if we have um, members or steel rods for example the way to connect them is to connect them with such that each three rods they make up a triangle which is equal in all sides so shown on the right is the an enlarged view of the connections between the three structural members so I want to see now to focus on this part the upper part of the uh, shape just an, as an example and I want to do the following I want to put a load on this structure on this frame which is represented here by the blue circle on the top I want to think of this um, f frame as a bridge and this bridge is carrying a load for example a car which is, represent which is represented by the blue circle on the top so I want to see the advantages of this design compared to other kind of designs so the first thing is we, we notice it's economical meaning minimum amount of construction materials so as you can see this structure uses the minimum amount of material to handle or to carry the load of course you can build a structure similar to this one and you make it solid that there are no gaps between the elements it will carry the load but it will be heavy expensive and it will be it will load itself it will produce stresses on itself due to its own weight so this is one advantage of the shape that Allah teaches us that is economical the minimum amount of material to, be, to handle the road is optimal another advantage if you look at how the force flows in the structure you can see that each structural member is loaded primarily axially in compression or tension what does this mean? suppose that you have a structural element like this now if you load it axially meaning along its axis it, ha it will it will have the kind of 
can be the strongest kind of position or strong, strongest loading condition on the structure if you load it actually. It will give you the maximum strength from it. The worst case to load it is by bending. That is the worst case, the worst loading scenario. So you see that in this structure, which we learned from the number 19, it's loaded primarily axially. This means that we'll get the maximum strength from each steel rod, for example. That's a, a main advantage. Also, stability. So if we look at the link between the structural members, the one shown on the left is the link in the design based on the number 19. We can see that if we do a little bit of force analysis, we, we find that the summation of forces in the x and y direction is equal to zero, the summation of forces, which means that the link between them remains in place, which means it's stable. And that is something very important in structural uh, in, in buildings that you need the connection between the elements to be stable, to stay in place, not to move so much. Now, if we compare this connection with the one shown on the right, and this is the one used in buildings and in the other structures made by people, we see that they use this kind of connection. Now, one of the main disadvantages in this that the summation of forces in the x direction is not equal to zero, meaning that the connection, the the node or the joint between the three members will move so much. It might be that stable. It might collapse. So we see another advantage from this shape. So we, so we saw, brothers and sisters, how Allah teaches us the best design for a steel frame such that it's economical, it's stable, it's strong. Now, let's see how this structure would perform using computer simulation. And to get to give you a, a sense of the strength and stability of the structure, I want to compare the one you can see on the screen with this design. This is a design made of steel rods, but in a square arrangement. It's not a triangular, square arrangement, with the same load on top. And I want to see the computer, how it, it will compare between the, the performance of both structures. So to start with the square arrangement, here on the left we have steel rods put in the computer and on the right we have the the small kind of um, red arrow it represents the weight on top and the computer gave me as you can see on the left that the maximum amount of deflection or displacement in the frame is 0.112 millimeter that is the maximum amount of deflection in the steel frame now, I want to compare it with this structure, the one you see on the screen. On the left, we have steel rods arranged in the way that Allah Gautama teaches us from the number 19. And I placed a load at the same position at the first case. So the only difference here is the change in design, how we arrange the steel rods. And in this case, the computer gave me that the maximum amount of displacement or deflection it's 0 0.567 millimeter. So if we compare both cases, as you can see on the screen, the square arrangement gave us 0 0.112 millimeters and the triangular arrangement gave us 0 0.057. So there is a 49% decrease in overall displacements. This means that the design based on the number 19, as we learned from the Quran, it's stronger and more stable than the, the other designs that people came up with based on their kind of uh, trial error technique and guesswork. So, we see, brothers and sisters, how Allah God Almighty teaches us from the Qur'an the best design for a steel frame. So you see, brothers and sisters, please, if you only ponder upon the Qur'an, you would not need anybody else. You just need Allah God Almighty. And you don't need any prerequisites, you don't need any kind of university diploma to understand this. It's very straightforward, very easy. So you will be self-sufficient by the Quran. You would, you would only need Allah God Almighty. You would not need anybody else. So no wonder that people, after years of trial and error, they found that the best way to, ste to build steel frames is to arrange the uh, structural members 
in exactly the same design that we learned from the number 19 in triangular fashion and exactly the same design as you can see on the screen this is called a truss it's called in civil engineering trusses truss system in a bridge and you can see the connections exactly like the one we learned from the number 19 and here's another bridge trusses and to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www.quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran.gmail.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.